Cellular respiration is the long series of reactions that allow cells to get energy from glucose in order to produce ATP. The process starts with glycolysis. In glycolysis, which occurs in the cytoplasm, glucose is broken down in a series of reactions into the molecule pyruvic acid. Glucose is a six carbon molecule. Pyruvic acid is a three carbon molecule. So you get two molecules of pyruvic acid for each molecule of glucose. Every time you break down a carbon molecule, some energy is released and needs to be captured by energy carriers. In this case, some of that energy is captured in molecules of ATP. Other energy is released in the form of high energy electrons and is picked up by a carrier, in this case NAD+, which is charged into NADH. So energy from glucose is now in these two molecules, and a lot of it is still in the pyruvic acid. If this is a eukaryotic organism and there's oxygen available, the pyruvic acid will enter the mitochondria and undergo pyruvate oxidation. In the process of pyruvic oxidation, the carbon molecule is further broken down from a three carbon molecule to a two carbon molecule called acetyl. The third carbon is released in a molecule of carbon dioxide. Now again, as that molecule pyruvic acid is broken down, some energy is released. And again, in the form of a high energy electron, which is picked up by NAD+. And the carrier is then charged into NADH. Now, for this molecule, acetyl, to go through the next part of cellular respiration, which is the Krebs cycle, it needs to have some help from what is called a coenzyme. So the, the coenzyme, called coenzyme A, is attached to the acetyl molecule. And the molecule acetyl coenzyme A is the gateway molecule to go into the Krebs cycle. So acetyl coenzyme A enters the Krebs cycle where it's further broken down. The two carbons that were remaining in this molecule are released as molecules of carbon dioxide. Again, a lot of energy is released in this process. Some of it is used to make ATP, but most of it is picked up in the form of high energy electrons by carriers. Once again, the carrier NAD plus is charged into NADH. And in addition, the carrier FAD is charged up with a high energy electron into FADH2. Now, the way to get energy from high energy electrons is to run them through the electron transport chain, which is another series of membranes within the mitochondria. The electron carriers dump their high energy electrons onto the electron transport chain. As they do that, the carriers are converted back to their uncharged forms, NAD plus and FAD. As the electrons move down the electron transport chain, the energy from them is used to make ATP, a lot of ATP. Most of the ATP generated by cellular respiration is generated in the electron transport chain from high energy electrons. Now all those electrons in the electron transport chain are moving from molecule to molecule. When they get to the end of the electron transport chain, they have to be picked up from the final electron acceptor, in this case, oxygen. Oxygen molecules, of course, diffuse in as we breathe, which is also called respiration. Those oxygen molecules diffuse through our bloodstream, into our cells, into our mitochondria, where they're available to accept the electrons, along with some hydrogen, from cellular respiration. As they do that, the electrons and the hydrogen and the oxygen form molecules of water. Now the oxygen is absolutely critical to cellular respiration, because if the oxygen is not present, to accept the electrons from the electron transport chain, then the electrons start to fill up all the molecules in the ETC, and it sort of gets backed up. And if all the molecules in the ETC are filled up, then electron carriers cannot continue to dump new electrons onto the electron transport chain. 
If that occurs, you get a sort of traffic jam of electron carriers building up. And that means that there are no electron carriers available to accept high energy electrons from the Krebs cycle. And if that is true, then you cannot run more acetyl-CoA through the Krebs cycle. And if that's the case, then you tie up all the coenzyme A and you cannot continue to do pyruvic oxidation. So in other words, without oxygen, the entire process of cellular respiration grinds to a halt. The cell cannot make ATP and it will die very quickly. So because oxygen is so essential to the process of cellular respiration, we call it an aerobic process. So again, the entire process of cellular respiration, breaking down glucose to make ATP, putting energy in the middle, on electron carriers, eventually running those electron carriers through the electron transport chain, which generates most of the ATP in the process, releasing the carbon as molecules of carbon dioxide. 